Welcome to Uncaged Zoo Tours! If you also love animals, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to get free walkthroughs of zoos. Welcome to the debut of Zoo Atlanta, the land of famous gorillas, an amazing reptile house, and giant pandas. Today, we'll start with their new African Savannah. Originally opened in 1989 as the Maasai Mara, the zoo thought, you know, some of its residents were not living in paradise. So in 2019, the zoo decided to update and expand the savanna to give the elephants a better home. So let's begin. Beyond the zoo's entrance is a peaceful pond home to Chilean flamingos. Although there are flamingos in Africa, the Chilean flamingo lives in the saltwater lagoons of South America. After the archway are southern white rhinos, which were camera shy on the day that I visited. Hopefully, I'll get some footage of them on my next tour in Atlanta. The African savanna has two seasons, the wet season and the dry season. During the wet season, it rains a lot, and it was even raining some of my visit. But the rain didn't stop me from recording African elephants. You may know that elephants have trunks, but their trunks can be used for way more than just smelling. They have two fingers on the tip of their trunk to pick stuff up or they can use all 100,000 muscles to knock down a tree. I would also like to talk about their teeth. Unlike the rainforest cousins, they have curved tusks that can be used for self-defense. In addition to their powerful tusks, which are made of ivory, they also have molars at the back of their teeth, which are replaced six times in their lives, unlike ours, which are only replaced once. You can view the elephants from two public yards and from the Savannah Hall, a private event space where you can have a meeting, celebrate a special event, or even get married. In between the viewings is a mob of meerkats. Although they live in the desert, they don't drink water. Instead, they get their hydration from the grubs they eat, which are mostly scorpions. But if they want to mess with a cobra, which I'm not sure why they would do that, they would be mostly unaffected by the snake's venom. If they are bitten, they will feel sick for a few hours, but it would make a speedy recovery. Around here you can learn about them and all the other animals in the area. You can also head down the path to a wired sculpture that teaches you about elephants. You can also head into the Zambezi Elephant Center, which serves as the elephant's indoor area, and where you can learn about how zookeepers take care of these giants. Next is another one of the Savannah's icons, the African Lion. I mentioned in episode 1 that lions live in a pride, but these three brothers live in a bachelor pride. Sometimes, they can even work together to take another pride by force and send the male that's in charge packing. It's kind of like how Simba defeated Scar and became king. Also, I wouldn't recommend keeping one of these cats as pets because they're wild animals and they can be very dangerous. Like all cats, they spend up to 20 hours a day sleeping. So I think it's best that we should not disturb them. Shh. Across from the sleeping cats are Cory Bustards. When it's time to mate, the male will fill its throat pouch with air and raise its crest and tail feathers, make a booming sound, and snap its bill to get a female's attention. Following that are more Savannah Stars, ostriches who are better at running than flying. There are Plains Zebras, which are known for their black and white stripes that help them camouflage, but can also make you feel dizzy. Ugh. But the main protagonists of this exhibit are three male reticulated giraffes. Despite their tall size, they have a hard time drinking. They stretch their legs far and wide to reach the water which is kind of awkward, but not in a hurtful way. Most of the time, they get their hydration from the plants they eat. For $3, you can feed the world's tallest mammal from the ground. To close out the savanna are the channel's first warthogs, 
These misunderstood picks have the longest gestation period of any other pig, which is around uh, five months. And yes, Eleanor gave birth to piglet triplets on April 13th, 2021. Their names are Daphne, Penelope, and Eloise. It's also worth noting that the keepers had the triplets choose their names. Although they can use their powerful tusks for digging, warthogs can't make homes, so instead they move into an empty aardvark burrow. When a hungry lion approaches, warthogs can run away up to 30 miles per hour. When the warthogs get back home, the mother lets her children into the den first and then goes backwards into the den and uses its tusks as a shield to defend it herself or their children. And when the lion gives up, they can celebrate by rolling around in the mud, just like their domesticated cousins. And that was our first look at Zoo Atlanta. What did you think of this area? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. When we return to Zoo Atlanta, we'll hang out with the scaly, slimy, and spectacular reptiles and amphibians and one of America's greatest herbitariums. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications.